iPads have dominated the tablet game for over a decade now, but with the new Surface Pro X, are things about to change? What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be comparing Microsoft's latest product, the Surface Pro X, against Apple's flagship device, the iPad Pro 12.9 inch display. You guys seem to enjoy last week's video quite a lot, so I'm going to stick to the same informative script that I used last time with only a little bit of personal opinion thrown in here and there from user experience. The Surface Pro X starts from 1699 AUD or 1170 USD, whilst the iPad Pro starts from 1749 Australian or 1200 USD. I'm using the price of the cellular version because the Surface Pro X only comes with the cellular version. Neither device comes standard with a stylus or a keyboard or any other accessories for that matter, so this price is just for the raw tablet. Even though the Surface Pro X is cheaper than the iPad Pro, Apple does offer you a non-cellular version which comes in at about 1500 Australian. So based on this simple fact that you can get it cheaper whereas you can't get the Surface Pro X cheaper, I'm awarding the price category to Apple. Let's talk about tech specs. The Surface Pro X comes only in the color black, which is actually my preference, so that's pretty good for me. It does come with eight gigabytes of RAM and a removable 128 gigabyte SSD storage. On top of that, you also get Microsoft's proprietary SQ1 chip. That doesn't really mean anything to anybody until you start measuring it against other competitors on the market. When we take a look at Geekbench, it gets a single core score of 725, whilst it gets a multi-core score of 2,821. The iPad Pro, on the other hand, comes in two options, space gray and silver. If you've had these devices before, there isn't too much of an option here. It is just kind of like a light silver and a dark silver. It isn't that black and white contrast. It has an A12X Bionic Apple chip, 4 gigabytes of RAM and starts from 64 gigabytes of storage. However, the iPad Pro does significantly better than the Surface Pro X in Geekbench scores. It gets a single core score of 1117 and a multi-core score of 4662. So this is almost double the performance of the Surface Pro X with half the RAM speed. This is all thanks to the intelligent A12X Bionic chip inside the iPad Pro. On paper, the iPad Pro is a much lesser device. However, when you take it out into the real world and start doing some testing like we've done on Geekbench, you find out that it actually is a better device. Hence, the second point goes to the iPad Pro again. It's not looking too good for the Surface Pro X at this point in time. Charging and battery life. The Surface Pro X has a theoretical 13 hour battery life and a supposed zero to 100% charge time in under two hours. Whilst the iPad Pro gets a significantly less eight hour run time and a two and a half hour charge time. It's impacted again here by the fact that it doesn't come with an 18 watt charger straight out of the box. If you wanna get this two and a half hour fast charge, you have to go out and buy this extra plug. Some very poor stats from Apple here, but a much needed point for the Surface Pro X. Ports and accessories. Surface Pro X gives you two USB-C ports, which are actually usable because it is running Windows 10. It also gives you the nano SIM slot tray for any LTE 4G compatible SIM cards. The iPad Pro only gives you one USB-C slot, which is only kind of usable for things that are compatible with iOS operating system. It also does give you that nano SIM card tray for any 4G LTE connectability. Now I'm gonna read the rest of these accessories off my iPad here because there's a lot of numbers to remember for you guys and I think it's better if I get them right first time. So the Surface Pro X keyboard and pen bundle comes in at 429 Australian dollars or 295 US. If you want the pen on its own, it's gonna cost you 235 Australian dollars or 161 US dollars. That's pretty steep for just the pen itself. A little extra win here is you can buy the Surface mouse along with it for 80 Australian dollars or 55 US. This isn't something that you can use on an iPad natively without some additional accessories. Last but not least, you can also get the Surface Dock, which gives you a couple extra 
potential uses with the Surface Pro X. It gives you a few extra USB ports and lets you connect it to a display so you can run it like a normal computer. That'll set you back another 300 Australian or 200 US. Apple, on the other hand, doesn't offer you a keyboard pencil bundle. It separates these two into two different price categories. So if you want the iPad Pencil 2, which is only compatible with the iPad Pro, it's gonna set you back 200 Australian dollars or 135 US dollars. The smart keyboard on top of that is gonna be another 299 Australian or 200 American. It offers a bunch of different connectors and adapters that you can use with this single USB port, which is not really relevant for most people, so I'm gonna skip over most of that. But more importantly, it offers Apple TV, which gives you the wireless compatibility that you can kind of use it like a desktop if you wanted to, but more prominently, just screen mirroring. This will set you back 280 Australian dollars or 190 USD. So overall in the ports and accessories category, I'm gonna give this one to Microsoft for the sheer versatility it offers with its variety of ports and its variety of accessories. The design category. Design is a bit more of a personal opinion here. Everybody's gonna have their say about what they think is a better looking device and a better functioning device. I personally like the look, the square boxy modern look of the iPad Pro over the Surface Pro X. However, I do like the kickstand that the Surface Pro offers straight in the body and you don't need to have a cover over the top to use it as kind of a little stand while you're watching TV or typing notes. On top of the design, Apple offers a much better camera setup and a much better screen. Respectively, you get 600 nits out of an iPad Pro, whereas you only get 450 from a Surface Pro X. As we all know, it offers the Retina screen display, which is miles ahead of anybody else in the market right now in 2019. So overall, my design category points are going to the iPad Pro. So what's the verdict? I think it's blaringly obvious that the iPad has so many more features over the Surface Pro X when it comes to a tablet battle. If this was more of a versatile laptop battle that's kind of a two-in-one, then yes, definitely the Surface Pro X would be winning here. But because this is a tablet-specific battle, iPad and Apple have mastered this over the last 10 or so years that they've been able to fine-tune it every single year with every single release. That's why I'm giving the crown to the iPad Pro. That's all for me guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button for the first time in 2020. And as always, I'll see you next Monday.